Hi guys, this is Drew from the Cellcast. You probably are already aware what I'm going to say, but uh, we are getting ready to start our Strange New Worlds Lower Decks crossover episode on Labor Day weekend. And then, of course, season four, immediately uh, after that, at the end of every episode, we're going to record that and release it within the week. Uh, these are all going to be standalone episodes, but because season two and three were not standalone, we thought we'd release these separately. So, yeah, this is part of our lead up into that. Uh, this week's episodes are Where Pleasant Fountains Lie and I Excretus, which was on our Spirited Away episode. For some reason, the Spirited Away episode is the most popular episode of our show at the moment, and I have absolutely no idea why. Uh, but on this episode, we did have a guest, that being... Uh, Cody from the Video Store Rejects podcast. So he does appear in this episode. The problem was he didn't watch the episodes for Lower Decks because he thought we were on the current season at the time. So, yeah. Uh, that happened. But uh, we still thank you, appreciate him being on the episode anyway. Uh, but yeah, here are those two. Here's our review for those episodes. Uh, enjoy. <laughs> Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the starship Enterprise. Its five-year mission, to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Come on now and set sail for the future. Find the sky, 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 Our first episode of tonight, Where Pleasant Fountains Lie, directed by Garrick Bernard and written by Jason Zurich. In this episode, Mariner and Boimler are stranded on an uninhabited planet with a sentient computer. And on the Cerritos, Lieutenant Commander Billups must prove his engineering abilities to an old adversary. Uh, new cast for this, our guest cast, non main cast. For this episode sorry i just my lips just my brain just went <laughs> anyway phil lamar as momo crew member and a computer we've got jessica mckenna as computer ensign barnes and the replicator a uh, june diane Raphael played plays queen paolana paul Shear plays and i'm going to say his full name here and andar rithio billups and Kari Walgreen is the Royal Guard and crew member. And this episode does have a special guest star, but this one is a little different than most of Lower Dex's other guest stars, as he is not reprising any of the roles that he played before. But this actor has appeared in like eight other roles in Star Trek, pretty much being the actor with the most roles in Star Trek at this point. And that is Jeffrey Combs. Mm. He uh, is uh, the other characters besides, uh, and he plays Agimus in this, the evil computer. Mm -hmm. This is his, this is the eighth character he's played for the franchise. The others being Andorian Commander Thylek Shran in Enterprise, Wayun four, five, six, seven, and eight. All of these characters being Vorta clones who were Jim Hadar field supervisors for the Dominion, and in Star Trek: Deep Space Nine and. He also played Liquidator Brunt, FCA, also in Star Trek Deep Space Nine. The title is a quote from William Shakespeare's erotic poem, Venus and Adonis. Oh. I did not even know he had one of those. But then I haven't really studied a lot of Shakespeare, to be honest. 
one of the evil computers that is seen at the Daystrom Institute at the end of the episode has the CBS logo on it. Mm. Uh, this episode introduces Andy, uh, Andy Billups's mother and explores more of Billups's backstory, including his birth name, Andorithio. It explains Ensign Barnes's characterization of Billups in Second Contact uh, when she says, knowing how to talk to women is kind of that guy's final frontier. <laughs> Boimler mentioned that Sand gave him a rash in Second Contact, but despite being stranded on a desert planet, this never comes up. This is the first episode of Star Trek Lower Decks to feature scenes on or near Earth. And Mariner says that they should just bury Agimus like Data's head was once, and Boimler reminds her that Data's head had been in a cave. This is a reference to the two-part Star Trek Next Generation episode Times Arrow and Times Arrow Part 2, where Data's severed head was found in a cave underneath San Francisco among the ruins of, 19, of the 19th century. It is a weird episode, too, if I remember correctly. Anyway, uh, that's the information I got for this first episode. Cody, what are your thoughts on it? Oh, God. Okay. Confession. I should have read filler. I read. I watched season three episodes instead of season two, but I've seen this, and this is great. I love this show. I think it's a great entryway into uh, Trek if you're a newbie, and I think... If you love Trek, this is a great show because not only is it parodying, but it's like a great love letter and has all those mm -hmm. wonderful Easter eggs you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And especially them getting Jeffrey Combs to come and do another part and him playing different roles throughout all the different series. That's just wonderful. All right. Jacob. Yeah. Uh, so this is my first, first watching of this. I'll be like, me watching this series, you know, as the episodes uh, progress, as the episodes we watch for the, for the for the show, I'm like, when I first heard the AI robot, I'm thinking like, is that Adam West? No. The, the, <laughs> when I first heard it, it sounded like Adam West. I'm it like, could have been. It could have been him. Adam West had passed before this episode. I agreed. I agreed. I was like, be like. Is that possible? Could they he, he recorded something and now he's it'd be like his voice is beyond the grave now? And I was like, no, that's just another actor. But he sounds so much like, you know, the the late Adam West. But this was like a really good episode where it was um, Boimler and Mariner be like, like you you see where they're like they're they have this conflict between each other. And they've always had a conflict between each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, where uh, Mariner is like, oh, you know, gets him reassigned because he can't handle this, which I think in truth he could handle it, but it's right, just more. But sh she's still seeing him as season one Boimler. Yeah. Not, not mm -hmm. seeing the full potential of who he is as a character. And, and I, I think, honestly, I think it's just more Mariner is afraid that he is going to surpass her and then leave. And so he, she is desperately trying to keep him there because she wants him around mm -hmm. as as a friend and honestly someone to pick on the entire time because that's right. what Mariner does for him but uh i, I love the um uh, I, I love the point where the uh the ai you know uh evil supercomputer uh thinks it's got the one up on boimler and boimler is playing him like just like a fiddle mm -hmm. the entire mm -hmm. time and I, I'm thinking like, oh wow, be like, this is really, really good. But when they finally get to the the revelation, they're like, you're not even really hooked into the computer. Be like, you're hooked into this little into the light switch. You're hooked into a light switch, and it's like, what? No! <laughs> I'll blind you. Here, <laughs> dang it! <laughs> it's so well done. It's just like, and it's like, go Boimler. Like Boimler, I love Boimler as a character. And one of the things that got me, I was like, because you never hear, uh, at least I, in my recall, Mariner ever apologizing for anything. She is like, constantly just, rawr, 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 rawr. yeah, like just, just, uh, and for for once, if I recall correctly, she actually apologized to Boimler. 
Because like every time be like if he mentions the Titan or he mentions yeah. going on outings or something like that. <laughs> because there again, that's hurt to her sensitivity that she's gonna lose Boimler and her her fear of like losing people in her life because they get moved off or reassigned. Mm-hmm. And it's just like she doesn't want to lose him. Mm-hmm. And uh I, that's that's more of her the, the psychological character of her. And I think I like that, even though I am not a fan of Mariner as a character, because she screws up everything. It gets away with everything. <laughs> well, part of that's because she's a. Well, are both her parents captains? I know yes. her mom's. Her, cap- yeah. her mother's a captain, but her dad's an admiral. admiral. Her dad's an admiral. Yeah. Yes. So. And I do remember this, right? Because uh, Engineer Billups, they go to his home. say that again you broke up isn't this the one where they go to engineer billups home planet and his mom is the queen and like yes it's not the home their home planet it is looks like maybe their it's a ship their the the queen's ship okay Uh, yeah her her, uh you know her her main uh what do you call that uh her flagship maybe Mm -hmm. And it's been messed up just enough that she has an excuse to get her son to come over to fix it. Mm-hmm. All right, but that's a ruse. They happen to yeah. they happen to be in the area, which even Captain Freeman's like, yeah, huh, sure. Uh huh. <laughs> that's why you. That's why you're here. Yeah, that was a good setup. I love that part. And it's like, oh, and then then the engineer comes in. And it's like, oh, hi, son. What? <laughs> <laughs> and and then uh, you get this had... weird backstory of him and be like he's a prince but he's refu- he like he's he... be like i i'm not going to i'm not going to have sex i'm not going to become the king you can't make me mom <laughs> like, oh, just, i'm not good enough to be an engineer cuz i let my friend get blown up oh. and admittedly when i watched i thought there's no way you just killed Rutherford, no, no he's way. a major character, and he went. And if the, if he really died here, he died the way Tasha Yar did. <laughs> <laughs> and Gosh. thankfully, no, that's not what happened. Yes, but I such a good the, ruse. Though. I just love the whole idea that this entire um, uh, society is based off Ren- Renaissance Fair. Stuff. That was hilarious. That yep. All the names <laughs> of the science to make it sound magical. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, you know. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that was that was funny. But I will what bring is... up one other little thing in dealing with this episode with uh Mariner and Boimler's mm-hmm. side of the story. This might be, especially in the rewatch, since I have seen, you know, up to the end of the last episode that came out. I find it interesting how they're already kind of playing into this idea that AI may not be a good thing, especially when you consider that that's what has to happen four years late after this episode mm. on uh, when uh, you've not watched Picard. I know no, that. And you're not, not going, Picard. And you're not in a hurry to watch Picard. No. And if you hadn't, a part of the, the a part of the setup of that show is if you remember from 2000, the 2009 Star Trek movie, mm-hmm. uh, the Romulans and Spock got thrown back in time because of a ex- the explosion of the Romulan star. Mm-hmm. Well, they knew this was coming for a while, and so Picard uh, had had got put in charge of the setup to help uh, get all the Romulans off of Romulus before, you know, the star, star blew up. But standard Romulan, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, secretiveness. What's the word? What is the word when you're? Uh, Alan doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, the Romulans made it super hard for them to get anyone out of there because the Romulans are so secretive about everything. And at some point, because of a secretive sect of the Romulan population, they blew up the uh, shipyards at Mars, where all the ships get built mm-hmm. there in Star Trek. And they used androids to do it. Mm. And after that point, there is a ban on creating synthetic life forms. Hmm. And I kind of am wondering if this is helping to lead into that kind of plot since the when all that happens is only four years after this episode. Oh, uh, okay. Especially considering what will happen at the end of season three. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. That's so, just, that is like, I'm not going to spoil, but I'm like, you, they right. can bring this up again in season three. Yes. So, and if you really stop and think about it, it came up in season one with Badgie. Mm-hmm. Oh, Badgie. Oh, Badgie. <laughs> so, this to and me. And don't forget Peanut Hamper. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, common. <laughs> so to, to this kind of is a reverse from our previous TAS. Uh, Series of Tangle yeah, the Adventure, Rap- Rapunzel Tangle Adventure, Rapunzel where, Tangle Adventure. Because in that one, you knew what was going to happen, and I was making all the theories. Yeah. <laughs> now I know what's going to happen, and I'm waiting to see what you come up with. Yeah. I'm just I'm I am enjoying because there again when we first started watching season one, all of those uh, what a year ago, two years ago, two years ago, there was a whole year where I was being slow at us at getting them recorded before we switch to recording them at the end of the actual podcast. Right, 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 right. So be like watching that because be like going into this, I'm like, oh, this is the same guys who did uh what what Rick is that? And Morty. Yeah, Bur- yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That show. There's that a lot show. of Rick and Morty writers on this show. Yeah, there are. And uh, I wasn't exactly sure. And so watching the first season, I'm like, wow, this is really good. I mean, it's a little raunchy here and there, but right. like, it's still a good story. It's a good show. And definitely Drew over here being a Trekkie, like, oh, he's like, he's like, 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 every stupid <laughs> the little entire thing. time. I'm like, what in the world are you giggling about? <laughs> Weird references what? that take too long to explain. Exactly. <laughs> Jacob, are you not a Trek fan? He's uh, only watched the movies. I, I've oh, only- okay. Yeah, I've I've like I grew up watching the original the original six, and the like basically all the movies. I've watched okay. a little bit a little a little TV show little TV shows here and there, and uh, yeah, it's it's when been he's an been interesting ride. To, huh? When he's been forced to watch those. Episodes. Yes, exactly. It's against <laughs> my will. It's against my will. Wrong show. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which ironically, you bring up the fact that. This show is a little raunchy at times. This was not the raunchy episode, despite no, what I'm talking about. <laughs> that well, is our next episode, episode, which we might as well go into now. I excretus is the oh, name of this gosh. next episode. <laughs> Directed by Kim Art and written by Ann Kim. Uh, in this episode... The Cerritos has to go through a bunch of drills set up by a drill instructor to make sure that they are up on their game. Oh my gosh. In this episode, uh, Eugene Corder, who plays Ensign Rutherford normally, mm-hmm. also voiced a winger Bingston Jr. Uh, Mark Evan Jackson plays a simulated Starfleet officer and simulated Vendome. Phil Lamar plays a commanding officer and a Borg. And a docking bay officer. <laughs> Lauren Lapkus plays Jennifer Shreyan, which I can now start saying her full name since it's been it was revealed in this episode. Jessica McKenna plays Barnes. Lennon Parham played Shari Yen Yim and a computer and, and a computer. Ben Roger played Steven, Steve Stevens, and Paul Shear played Anderithio Billups. And special guest star for this episode is Alice Kriej playing the simulated Borg Queen as she played the Borg Queen in Star Trek First Contact. Okay, gotcha. Uh, getting into the trivia for this one. The name I Excretus echoes the Next Generation episode I Borg, as well as classic books such as I Claudius and I Robot. The name mm. Excretus of Borg, like Locutus of Borg, the one that Picard was turned into, is derived from Latin with locutus meaning having spoken or he who has spoken, and excretus on the same model means having separated or he who has separated. However, excretus also carries overtones in the English language for excrete, meaning to poop, I'm going to say. (laughs) Shin Yin Yim is the second Pandronian to appear in Star Trek. After Ari Ben Bim from the from Star Trek the Animated Series episode Bim, her outfit is nearly identical to the one worn by Bim. Several background characters are given names for the first time in this episode, including Aryan, Castro, Dahi, Merp, 
Pandara, Ross, and Volus. The Andarian, who was initially known simply as Jennifer or Jen, was identified fully as Jennifer Schreyen. Several scenarios for the Lower Decks crew mirrored episodes from Star Trek, the original series, and Star Trek The Next Generation, including Mirror Mirror, the Hedge Bat in Ethics, the fake building facades in Inspector of the Gun, Spock's sacrifice in Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, Spock's rescue in Star Trek III The Search for Spock, and of course, the, episode, the, next, the original series episode The Naked Time, along with its ne Next Generation sequel, The Naked Now. My gosh. It was not quite that sexy in the original shows. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I will say this. Their explanation of what that virus is is in this in this episode is just that it's you know it makes people sexy and want to have yeah. sex all the time. Right. In the original episodes, it's just that it made them act drunk. Oh, okay. But then but somehow this affects data the android who has relations we'll say with yar in that episode yep, yep and this was... gets later referenced in star trek first contact when the board queen asks how long has it been since you've experienced physical forms of pleasure and he rattles off the date to the seconds oh my god <laughs> oh of course the droid would remember right <laughs> Anyway, oh my god! I'm sorry. That's just one of those weird <laughs> trivia's that you have to throw in there when it comes up. Speaking of the Borg Queen, a hologram of another of this character appears in this episode, performed by the character's original actress Alice Kriege. Much of her appearance recreated for Boimler mirrored Data's experience with the Queen in Star Trek: First Contact. The holographic Andorithio Billups in Mariner's Naked Time scenario, albeit nude and sitting on a table, is the only character not doing anything remotely sexual, merely reading from a pad. This is in line with the real Billups having to maintain his virginity in order to stay in Starfleet, which was explored in the previous episode. <laughs> this is contrasted by holographic Mirror Billups, who was portrayed as becoming a little bit turned on from torturing people. <laughs> mm. Also, the crystalline entity appears, revealing that the one we saw in Star Trek The Next Generation to be part of a species rather than just a unique entity. Last but not least, the holographic Mirror Boimler sounds the alarm that Mariner was an imposter by pointing at her and shrieking. This references how pod people publicly identified humans in the 1978 film version of Invasion of the Body Snatchers, which Leonard Nimoy had a starring role in, and it, which was an attempt to break him out of being typecasted as Spock. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. So do you have any thoughts on this one, Cody? Uh, all I remember, because I accidentally watched season three instead of season two, right. and now I'm looking back and saw, oh, you did say season two, so apologies. <laughs> wonk, wonk. But I yeah. do remember, I do remember Boimler being, like, that guy trying to get the perfect 100% score in the video game, like, going back. It's like, you already did it. What are you doing? <laughs> Why are oh you doing this? But it's he's got like, to be perfect. Yeah, I can do it. it. He's, got, he's got the perfect score, and he gets the call. It's like, you've got to keep that going for as long as possible. And he ends up with a score of zero because he gets assimilated, and somehow the hologram is good enough. He still thinks he's assimilated. Oh, poor Boimler. <laughs> poor Boimler. Oh, poor guy. <laughs> oh, but it's a fun episode. They're all fun. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. Jacob, uh, what are your thoughts? Oh on my this gosh! One? The the first thing I think is poor Boimler. The entire episode is like the the poor man is he is a perfectionist. He's trying to get this score, and I'm thinking it's like he's over and over and just dedicates how how uh, dedicated this man is to like Starfleet. He's got to be right. He's got to do the right thing, and uh, he gets that call. You got to be in the entire time. And like you said, he, he gets assimilated and they have to yank him out of the simulator. He thinks he's been assimilated. And like at one point he's be like, yeah, but they took everything from me. And I'm being like, at the end of the episode, they're all kind of laughing about it. This man has gone through so much trauma and they're all laughing at him. About it. I'm like, oh, poor Bormler. 
<laughs> that's a bad for a man. <laughs> and 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 then the the others the the simulations were like, oh my gosh, this is hilarious. And then the one where they're all like, you know. The, the 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 nudie the nudist one the nudist the nude the naked time the na- the naked in time <laughs> I was like what the heck <laughs> admittedly the first time I watched this I went whoa that's a little farther than I was expecting them to go <laughs> oh my gosh definitely that that point where it's like it's uh when you get that one shot where it's 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 the episode where it's the uh, the simulation where it's um uh, it's Mariner right. Yeah, it's Mary Mary was in that one. And I mean, like you see Boimler, it's like, oh, then I'm like, whoa, okay. <laughs> that was a bit much. I will admit, though, the one that made me laugh was when they were on the bridge doing the group uh, drill, and uh, Shax is running helm, and he has to get up and stretch. And all of a sudden, Mariner just sees him from the naked time one and goes, oh, yeah. and, and it's just like, oh, my word. <laughs> That was good. That was like, oh my gosh. But like, no, I'm having like really, really bad flashbacks. <laughs> All I know is whoever upgraded the holograph hologram system from Star Trek First Contact until now, since that was the last time we saw the holodeck, <laughs> they put way too much work into it because this is too <laughs> realistic now. <laughs> There's oh always God. that guy, right? It's There's always, always that, that one person. Yes. But it's someone. It's put way too much work into making this making this perfect. Oh yeah, but it was such a good episode. It was to me at some points I'm like, whoa, okay, I'm a little crazier. But overall, very well done. the The fact that uh, uh, the captain and Mariner, who her daughter and daughter and daughter and mother, be like, are thinking it's like, oh yeah, because be like, this was all about you know like. Team, like team building be like make the make the uh the um make the crew like you know you know integrate the team better and the whole mm-hmm. bit and then it's just turned into this 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 sleazy you know uh literally making it harder uh-huh. so that they can't pass because she's used to doing all the the ship of the, the major ships yeah the ship and the they line. always pass all the time so yeah give it to a small ship that no one cares about and show them all fail that yeah. sounds like a great mm-hmm. idea to keep me keep my job. Yeah, it definitely. Yep. You go, yep, you go back to the first the first of the episode where the uh, the lower decks crew is on the satellite and they get emerged and they warp and out. out they leave them for six hours. <laughs> and like, what what do they what do they get? Be like, when you like compensate compensate them for something? Be like, oh yeah, here's some nice heating pads. You left me in the void of space for six hours. I could have died. <laughs> and then the, the the point that was like, there was a part of me. It's like this is the worst captain ever. <laughs> and then where it's like she's trying to make a point with the uh, the instructor. Where she's like, "Oh yeah, we're we're gonna do the most dangerous thing ever because you're gonna change this score," and literally goes on all these insane missions that, "Oh yeah, we're gonna put you to the brink of death and make you change it." And I'm thinking, like, does this crew do this all the time? We don't see this because we are never. Fo- if this were a if this if a show was being made about the Cerritos, we would never be following their A story. No, we're always following no. the B story. No. Yeah, I agree with yep. that. I agree with that. Yeah, which, we're always following the B story. Will be so it very makes sense. Our going on adventures like this should be very obvious when we get to the first episode of season three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no spoilers. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not but, saying anything. That, that oh, epi- I know. I know. <laughs> first episode of season three is one of my favorites. Uh, okay, but it, we'll get uh, there when we get that's there. That's not for another two episodes, but uh, but such a good episode. Yes. Oh my gosh. Uh, and I will say that. The events of this episode actually do affect some stuff coming up. Oh, okay. Just, mm-hmm. just putting that out there. Gotcha. Uh, but uh, that is going to be the end of this episode. The next two Star Trek Lower Decks episodes we'll be reviewing next week will be Wedge Dudge and First First Contact. Nice. <laughs> Wedge Dudge is Klingon. Oh, oh. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh, that's, that's right. Be, and I'm not telling you what it means until we get to that episode. Okay. But anyway, join us next time for that. Cody, where can we find you on you the can, internet? You can find me on Twitter 
and letterboxed at film nerd 85. You can find my video stream show video store rejects is on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel and on our Facebook page. Awesome. So yeah, that's going to be it for us. Uh, of course our, out our, our so shameless self-promotion will be in the uh, pre-recorded outro. Uh, but in the meantime, this has been Drew. This is Jigan. And this is Cody. <laughs> Thanks for having me. And we'll catch you in the next frame. You can follow Jacob on his Facebook at Jacob B. Heron. His Facebook page, Jacob's Daily Art Corner, where he tries to draw each and every day. His Instagram at Jacob B. Heron. His Twitter at Jacob Heron. And his letterbox to Jacob Heron. You can find Drew on Facebook at Drew Dodgen. His Facebook page, Drew's photo bin to see his photography. His letterbox page at G. George 759. His Twitter at G. George 759. And Instagram at Drew Dodgen. You can like us on Facebook at The Cellcast Podcast. On Twitch at The Cellcast Gaming. On YouTube at Cellcast. On Twitter at cast underscore cell. The Cellcast can be found at Apple Podcasts, Google Play Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or anywhere else fine podcasts are downloaded from. Please rate and review us where you found us, and also on Podchaser. Email us at thecellcastpodcast at gmail.com. The Cellcast is a proud member of both the Pop Americana and Culture Box Media Networks. For more information, please see the link in the description. Our theme song is Drop and Roll by Silent Partner. And remember, that's Cell with a single L.